What is going on, good people of YouTube? I'm Jay Slay. Thank you so much for joining me. And wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're playing some Madden 21, but before we get into it, if you enjoy the content, leave a like rating. And if you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to stay updated with all of my uploads. If you missed our previous video, I'll leave a link in the description of this video for you to go check it out. But in it, I open 10 75 to 79 gold player packs, and we find out if that's a glitchy method to make coins an ultimate team. Be sure to check that video out. So for today's video, we've got episode number eight of Rebuilding the Atlanta Falcons. I didn't know if we'd get this far into the series, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're enjoying this series, if you want to see it continue, or if you'd like me to, to do some other teams. I have been toying with the idea of doing some other teams similar to the style that we're doing. So let me know in the comment section down below how you feel about that. But without further ado, let's just jump right in. Now, we are are coming off of a disappointing 7-9 season. I didn't see it coming. Statistically, we still played pretty well, but we just did not perform in order to get to the playoffs. It was unfortunate. Now, if you did miss that episode, and if you've missed any episodes, go ahead and click the card in the top right-hand corner of the screen. I'll take you to the playlist, and you can see every episode up till now. It makes chronological sense, so go ahead and do that. But let's jump right in. Let's see what we're working with on offense, defense, special teams. Hopefully, this is a playoff team, and hopefully, it's Super Bowl teams. We haven't won a Super Bowl yet. Spoiler alert for you guys that are new to the series. However, Offensively, we've got some pieces to work with. Now, our offensive line has come a, come along, but we still just don't have someone who's you know stabilizing our offense at like a 90 overall, right? But we've got Jackson Carmen at left tackle, Trey Smith at left guard, Edward Scott at center, Chris Lindstrom at right guard. He's getting up in age. We're going to have to look to make some changes. I think I say this at every single episode, but we're going to have to look to make some changes on the offensive line pretty soon. Michael Bohannon at right tackle. Dominic Darby, solid option at the tight end position. Coming down, Justin Fields starting off this episode at a 92 overall. He is leading our team. We've got Jordan Alexander at running back. He had probably the best year of any running back that we've had so far really excited to see what he does in episode eight here josh irving 75 overall running back backing him up tremaine jones is our fullback now at the wide receiver position we have upgraded this past offseason. Now, first off, we've got Jalen Waddle, who's a 95 overall, probably one of the best wide receivers in the NFL at this point. I don't even know who's still in the NFL, but nonetheless, Waddle is our number one guy. We signed Sheldon, yeah, Sheldon Fields in the offseason. He is an 85 overall with only normal development, but he's only 25 years old, giving us an option at a number two receiver that we desperately needed because last year, Brian Smith was our number two receiver. Now, he is a star development player with 79 overall with incredible speed, but I felt like we needed that second option for Justin Fields to throw to, or third option, really, when you consider Waddle and Darby as his first two. Shaq Cobb is our fourth wide receiver, and then Trevor Timmons is our fifth wide receiver. Those are receivers that we took in the draft two episodes ago defensively remember we've moved on Foya Luakon's no longer here and now Michael Walker is no longer here so at the linebacking spot we do have Deion Jones he's 32 we're gonna have to move on from him at some point I don't like it he's one of my favorite Falcons however he is getting up in age but he still has that superstar x factor so you like to see that Landon Little has superstar abilities right now you like to see that let's just go over just show you because this is a newer ability we did cover it in the last episode but let's just show you what he has he has under pressure so unfortunately he's not going to be pressuring the quarterback that much because I want him in pass coverage but defenders with this ability can apply pressure to the quarterback from a greater distance and then Nick Campbell this is going to be his first year starting I'm really excited I, I believe it's his first year starting I think we had Michael Walker last episode I can't remember to be honest with you but Nick Campbell I'm excited to get him out on the field see what he's capable of he's 26 years old we've had him for a few seasons now let's actually see was he on was he a starter last year let's go to stats I can't remember if Michael Walker we got rid of him last year or this offseason uh so that was 2026 yeah he only had seven tackles so he definitely wasn't a starter Michael Walker was definitely our starter just ignore me not being certain who was on the team but nonetheless that's our linebacking core defensive line Joseph Osai Bobby Beckham David Woodard and Keelan Dent a strong defensive line. Grady Jarrett, remember we had moved on two episodes ago. So Bobby Beckham now is holding the center of the defensive line down. And then you've got Osai and Keelan Dent. If Keelan Dent can get that X factor, our D line is going to be absolutely disgusting. It already is disgusting. It's going to be even more disgusting, right? All right. 
in the secondary. So the deeper secondary positions, the free and strong safety, is where we are going to struggle this year. Paris Ford's a solid option at 83 overall. This is our first round pick. The draft this past year was terrible. We hit some good picks, but we just didn't hit anybody that was better than normal development. And it's a bit of a bummer, but nonetheless, we are running in to the season with Nathan Jackson as our starting strong safety. Maybe he can make some plays for us and produce. Now, corners, a little not as good as last year, right? To uh, to put it bluntly. <laughs> that's I don't know if that's bluntly, not as good. I don't know. They're... A little worse than last year. That's probably not even more blunt. But anyway, Caleb Farley, 95 overall. Asante Samuel is at an 80 overall. Braylon Thomas, I believe is his name, is at a 77 overall at our third cornerback. And then I'm not even sure who this guy is. Hopefully he's not going to get on the field. Rasheem Harris. Okay, cool. So corners, I mean, we're okay, obviously, at the top with Caleb Farley. Probably one of the best corners in the NFL. Uh, but it significantly drops off once you go past him. So hopefully someone's going to take that step and upgrade. Sterling Hoff, Victor young way Koo at the punter and kicker, respectively. And then our specialist. Take a look. This is what we're going into the season. Not going to go through this too much. Nothing really changing from last season. So there's that. And then this is our practice squad. Okay, so was that star development? Whoa, what's going on here? Couple of hidden developments on our practice squad. For some reason, I don't pay attention to this at all, but the CPU loves to sign 1,500 wide receivers to put on the practice squad, as you can see. And then good old D. Washington, Darius Washington, the lone corner, the lone player that's not a wide receiver. But we've got two guys that are star development, at least, on our practice squad. We'll have to keep an eye on that. All right. So the way this is going to work, we are going to simulate four quarters of the season at a time and then reconvene at each quarter. So... The way that works now in week number one is we'll play or we'll simulate the away matchup against the Saints, the home matchup against the Panthers, the away matchup against the Bucks. We go on our bye, and then we'll simulate the home matchup against the Cowboys. It looks like we've got a little more balanced schedule, which is something that we haven't had in the past, so you like to see that so far at least. So I will catch you after that home matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, after the first quarter of the season, we're on for a repeat. We're on for a worse season than last year. We are 1-3, and three, and we, we've we been competitive in one game. We have not been competitive in any other games. Let's take a look and show you exactly what I'm talking about. So we started off at the Saints losing 35-14. to 14. So not only is our offense not scoring, our defense is not stopping anybody either, especially considering, look at the rest of the, the games. We do win 23-17 to 17 against the Panthers, but then we lose 35-14 to 14 again against the Bucks. Have our bye week. Dion's like, hey, brother, can we get some rest and, and, you know, recharge our batteries? And I'm like, no, man, you guys have literally given up almost, what, 120 points in three games? That's like 40 a game almost. I mean, not that much, obviously, as you can see, not 120. But what is that? Like, they're, at, what, almost 100 points a game? I was being facetious, embellishing a bit. 100 points a game? That's insane. That's ridiculous. And then, and then... They were just like, hey, hey, coach, we don't like playing for you anymore, buddy, because you don't give us the time off that we need. They go on and lose at home 35-20. to 20. I don't know. I don't know what's going on, to be honest with you. But hopefully we're going to regroup. Hopefully Raheem is going to get the troops together. They're going to rally around him because this is not a good start to the season. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. Offensively, abysmal, 28th in the NFL. Defensively, somehow good even though we're giving up 900 points a game we've scored 71 points which is good for 30th in the nfl we've allowed 122 points which i can only imagine is in the lower third of the nfl too justin fields is off to an awful start six touchdowns six interceptions just abysmal 1000 yards passing rushing stats abysmal 48 carries for 156 yards through four games abysmal I don't know what we need to do I literally don't know what we need to do other than just get new players Jalen Waddell is having a good year so far 22 catches 338 yards Sheldon Fields with 216 yards Dominic Darby always has a better literally he has his whole season in the last quarter of the season 200 yards one touchdown Ryan Smith 148 yards and one touchdown defensively Asante Samuel leading the team in tackles that's never a good sign Deion Jones, Landon Little, Caleb Farley rounding out the top four. 
quarterback sacks, three from Osai, two from Dent, and then one from a handful of players. I bet we don't have a lot of interceptions at all. We never do. Hey, we have three, so that's almost averaging one a game, so that's not bad. Paris Ford, Caleb Farley, and Nathan Jackson, so that's good. You like to see that from our number one overall pick. Just a bad start. Bad, bad start so far. A start that we're going to have to erase here in the next four weeks, that's for sure, if we want to have any shot at making the playoffs. Jalen Waddell can upgrade his development trait, so that is a good thing. He could go from superstar to superstar X-Factor, so we need to get him four touchdowns or 200 yards rushing or receiving. That's going to be a tall task, especially on an offense that can't move the ball. We've got some players to re-sign, obviously, as we do every year. Our bookends are going to have to be re-signed. However, I think I'm only going to sign one and then let the other one walk because we do have Corey Baker, as you remember. Corey Baker is a uh, star development player who's about 80 overall, and uh, we're probably going to have him slide in and play that that starting position vacated by either Dent or Osai, whichever one ends up walking. Landon Little getting an upgrade. Trey Smith getting an upgrade. So you like to see that. Little's up to an 85 overall. Good stuff there. All right. Oh, and he gets, uh, he gets another ability. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that is. New ability unlocked. It is... Uh, short route KO. Okay, so not bad. Uh, better for a pass coverage linebacker. Defenders with his ability force more catch tackle knockouts and man-to-man -man versus short routes less than 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. So he would be guarding running backs, fullbacks, tight ends, uh, hopefully running you know shorter routes. And uh, that may, might be end, up, end up being a little valuable. Okay, so home matchup against the Bucks. We go on the road to face the Eagles. We're home against the Saints, home against the Vikings. So we got three out of four home games and then as you can see in week 10 we've got a home game against the Texans so the back end of our schedule is going to be littered with away games so that should be a great time there but anyway I'll see you guys after that week nine home matchup against the Minnesota Vikings okay second quarter of the season thankfully we turned it around I was a little nervous there because we lost the first game however we did bounce back now we are four and four going into week 10 you can see the Bucks are five and three so we're only one game back of them so you like to see that let's go to the schedule let's take a look and see how things shook out so we started off with a loss against the Bucks so the thing that sucks is we've already played two games against the Bucks lost both of them so we're actually down two games one back in the win and loss column but they got the tiebreaker over us as well so we actually need to pick up two games on them now week seven we won a game in week eight we won a second and in week nine, we won a third, and that's called a winning streak. So something that we haven't had, it seems like, in a while. And our offense is finally putting together, winning 34 to 27, 42 to 21, and 39 to 35 against the Eagles, Saints, and Vikings, respectively. Good stuff there. Let's keep this momentum going. Lord knows we need to. I want to make the playoffs. I don't want this to be another letdown season. That's for sure. Let's take a look at the stats, see where we're shaking out here. 16th in the, in the NFL in offense. That's come up 12 spots. We've dropped in defense. We just decided to start playing offense and then figured we weren't going to play any defense. So we're scoring 209, 209 points. That's 18th in the NFL. We've allowed the 30th most points in the NFL. I mean, not that we were really playing defense before because we were giving up a ton of points, but we weren't really giving up a lot of yardage. But what happened is Jalen, uh, Jalen, Justin Fields stopped turning the ball over. He didn't throw a single pick versus 11 touchdowns. You like to see that. He's up to 2,200 yards passing as well. Rushing, no, no change at all. I, I, I literally don't understand why my starting running back is not only the starting running back, the third down running back, and the power running back, and the dude has 390 yards with one touchdown, but Josh Irving, who shouldn't even be getting in the game, has six touchdowns and 141 yards. I, literally, it's like that every single season. We might as well not even put a running back out on the field. Jalen Waddell is unhappy with the game plan. I'll show you in a second. And I'm, I was like, all right, I'm going to get on here. He's going to have, like, what, 500 yards and still, like, three touchdowns that he had before. This dude has 45 catches for 753 yards and 10 touchdowns. He's averaging almost 100 yards a game. Brother, what do you want us to do? Dominic Darby, 49 catches, 500 yards, four touchdowns. You like to see that. Sheldon Fields with two touchdowns, almost 400 yards. Brian Smith, 291 yards. Jordan Alexander, I mean, at least he does well in the receiving game. That's about all I can say for our running backs. Asante Samuel Jr. still leading the team in tackles. Landon Little with 57 tackles. That's good to see. Deion Jones with 54. Braylon Thomas in the slot with 41 tackles. 
Five sacks for Osai, three for Beckham, three for Dent, and then a handful of guys not making much impact at all. Three picks for Paris Ford. This dude's in a contract year, and he finally wants to start making plays. I see you, Paris. You've been holding back. You want to get that big contract, don't you? I see you. Nathan Jackson with two picks. That's good to see. And then land a little and Caleb Farley. Caleb Farley with one pick. You'd like to see him. I mean, this guy has like averages maybe like one to two picks a season. I want to see him get like six picks. Shouldn't be that hard to ask for. Dude's 95 overall. Something ridiculous like that. All right, so there's the stats. Here's Jalen Waddle, who's unhappy and frustrated with the game plan. It's been quiet. Has it really? You have 10 touchdowns to the first eight games of the season. You're on pace for 20 touchdowns. Unbelievable. Uh, you want to be more involved in the offense. I don't even, I, how can we get you more involved in the offense? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The frustration's coming out in this one. But we're 4-4, four and four, so that's obviously a good thing. So, five touches or 100 yards. <laughs> five touches. I mean, the dude is averaging almost 100 yards a game. That should happen. We got to play the Texans. They're 6-2. and two. I just saw that. Edward, Edward Scott getting an upgrade. So, you like to see that. We'll upgrade his pass protector archetype. And let's go ahead and upgrade Dominic Darby. I see good old Koo getting an upgrade in there. That's always a good sign. Getting the old kicker an upgrade. We're going to let the CPU handle that one. Dominic Darby, is this guy superstar? That is a lot of attributes that just got upgraded. Now he's still star. All right. Let them upgrade it. So we got, and one I told you, we were going to have like 27 away games in a row. Home against the Texans. And then we go on the road to face the Panthers, the Seahawks. And the Giants. And then, in week 14, we go on the road to face the Titans. Ay, ay, ay. I'll catch you guys after week 13 at the New York Giants. Okay, we were on a roll. We won six in a row. And then we ended out week 13 losing to the Giants 24-21. to But we are tied with the Bucks Now, remember, we lost both games, so they got the tiebreaker on us. So they're actually in first place. But we are 7-5. and five. At the beginning of the season, when we started out 1-4, and four, I didn't think that there was any prayer we would get to 7 wins. I am dead serious. Let's take a look at the schedule, see how things shook out. So we started off with a home win against the Texans, 41-31. Followed that up on the road at the Panthers, 24-21. At the Seahawks, we won 29-26. And then at the Giants, 24-21. Not too upset about that. I mean, that is a 3 game stretch of road games and we got a fourth at the titans but then it does balance out a little bit we're home versus the football team then we're at the colts and then home versus the jaguars so let's take a look at the stats see how things played out during the third quarter we don't need to go look at the schedule again josh come on brother stats stiggity stats 16th in offense so we slipped a bit offensively that means defensively we didn't improve at all we're still 29th in defense uh we are scoring a lot of points so 324 points that's good for sixth in the nfl and then we are following it up to just like offensive or just like defensive yards allowed with 29th and points allowed justin fields is second in passing and he threw three picks that last quarter however it looks like he threw about nine touchdowns so he's got 35 400 yards 26 touchdowns nine picks not a bad season at all so far. Uh, who cares about this stat right here, the running backs? I'm just going to go past it because it just makes me mad looking at it. Jalen Waddle, what a phenomenal season. This has got to be number one wide receiver in the NFL type season. Already has a full season pretty much it looks like with stats accounted for. 73 catches, 1,162 yards, 12 touchdowns. We still got four games left to go. Incredible stuff there. 650 yards for Dominic Darby with six touchdowns. Sheldon Fields has 561 yards and four touchdowns. And then Brian Smith with 550 yards and two touchdowns. Defensively, not too well so far this year. Landon Little with 83 tackles, so he has taken the lead over Asante Samuel, who has 81, 75 for Deion Jones, 65 for Nathan Jackson. Quarterback sacks, it's been dreary so far for us. Osai does have six and a half, so that's not too bad. Bobby Beckham with four. Keelan Dent, a very down year with four in a contract year for him. Corey Baker probably going to play a much larger role next year. He's got two sacks so far. Interceptions. Three for Paris Ford, two for Nathan Jackson. Still the same there. It looks like we got one pick, two picks, one for Farley, and then one for Samuel. So we just, ah, every single season we struggle, struggle, it seems like, to get turnovers, interceptions specifically. All right, let's come over. Let's take a look at the playoff picture. 
We should be in the playoffs so far. We are the sixth seed. We would play the Cowboys if the season ended today. The Vikings have that number one seed. The Bucks have the number four seed. So, uh, you know, we have the same record as them. And obviously, they're in the division lead. So, they have the four seed. But it looks like they're the lowest division seed so far with that four seed. Raiders looks like have the number one seed in the AFC if the playoffs started today. Okay, we got some players to upgrade. Let's come down and see who's got upgrade Sheldon Fields. That's always good for your number two wide receiver to get an upgrade. Let's go ahead and upgrade his deep threat archetype. Try to say that ten times fast. And still has normal development, so you don't like to see that. But Justin Fields getting an upgrade, so nobody's playing up with morale, I've noticed so far this season. So you don't like to see that, but Justin Fields is up to a 94 overall with no morale. So if we can get into the playoffs, he's probably going to be up to at least a 95 without upgrading him. Maybe even a 96, just depending. So that could loom large going into the playoffs. All right. We got the 2-10 and 10 Titans. You better win this game, Falcons. They were home against the football team, on the road against the Colts, finishing it out at home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. A lot of games against the AFC South. I'll catch you guys after that Week 17 matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, what a finish to this season. We ended up going 9-2 and two over the final 11 weeks of the season, getting to 10-6, and six, getting to the playoffs, winning the division, now, had we have won that game, well, we still wouldn't have won, gotten a first-round bye. That's going to go to the Minnesota Vikings. But as you can see, the Bucks they slipped in that fourth quarter of the season, going 8-8. Eight and eight. They are the seventh seed, so we may still have to contend with them. We've lost them twice already. But let's go ahead and come to the schedule. Let's take a look and see how the final quarter of the season shook out. So we started that quarter at the Titans. We won 21-16. Came home to face the football team, winning 31-28. We're in 2027, and the football team still hasn't figured out what their mascot is going to be. That's a bit unfortunate for their fan base. At the Colts, 42-7. Completely steamrolled through them in their place. And then we came home against the Jaguars, and we lost 23-17. Now, the Jaguars finished 10-6 and as well with the same record as us. They're in the playoffs in the AFC, so that was a playoff team, but we want to beat playoff teams because we want to make it to the Super Bowl, right? Take a look at the playoff picture. We're facing the 8-8 eight eight Packers in the wild card. There's the Bucks at the 7th seed facing the Giants. I believe we beat the Giants earlier on in the year, if I'm not mistaken. I think we lost to the Vikings, so we've lost to some teams, beat some teams that are in the playoffs. As you can see, the Raiders in the AFC, they're the number one seed over on that side. All right, let's take a look at the stats. See where things see how things shook out in the stat department. We are 13th in the NFL in offensive yards at almost 6,000. Defensively, we improved, albeit slightly, uh, almost giving up 6,000 yards. Defensively, scored 435 points, so that's good for 7th in the NFL. 27th in points allowed at 409. Giddy up, giddy up. Justin Fields, our quarterback, man, that's a solid year. Probably too many picks for MVP, but you can't argue with that season. Almost 4,500 yards, 33 touchdowns. Rushing, who cares? I, another, I mean, he came on towards the end of the season, it looks like, with eight touchdowns, 850 yards rushing, but, man, I just, I'm so frustrated with the running back position. 91 catches, almost 1,500 yards. What a season! From Jalen Waddle, 14 touchdowns, 850 yards, 7 touchdowns for Fields. Dominic Darby had 777 yards and 6 touchdowns. Brian Smith with 652 yards, 3 touchdowns. Jordan Alexander performing well in the passing game, 2 touchdowns, over 350 yards. Defensively, looks like we improved a little bit. Asante Samuel with 108 tackles, leading the team. That is just wild stuff there. Deion Jones with 100 tackles, Landon Little with 96 tackles, Nathan Jackson with 87 tackles and three picks. Our first round pick with normal development started the season as a 72 overall. I think he played really well. I think he played well enough to where we can go into next year as him being our starting strong safety. Joseph Osa, I got to 11 sacks. You like to see that. Keelan Dent with eight sacks. So a down year considering where he's been in the past, but a solid season. Bobby Beckham with four, handful of guys with two and a half. We're not going to go through all them. Interceptions. Okay, so we picked some passes off. That's a good sign going into the playoffs. Landon Little with three picks. It's good stuff there. Paris Ford with three. Nathan Jackson with three. Caleb Farley with three. Awesome. 
Forced fumbles. Joe Fosai with 47. Nah, that'd be pretty awesome, but no. One, we, we forced one forced fumble the whole season. Foye Luakon forced three forced fumbles in the first half against the Dallas Cowboys. We forced one the whole season. Probably didn't recover it. Nah, of course not. Of course not. All right. Awards. Did anybody, and I mean anybody, win any awards? That'd be great. Jordan Love wins MVP. Justin Fields down at six. Coach of the year is Griffin Murphy. That is Bill Belichick. Howard Lodge. <laughs> Victor Stranger. <laughs> Some of these names. Raheem Morris down there at number eight. Offensive player of the year goes to Jalen Hurts. Justin Fields coming in at number two. Defensive player of the year is Roquan Smith. I feel like he's won it before and... I feel like he's won it a handful of times already. We got nobody else there. Offensive rookie. Where was Jason, Jalen Waddell here in Offensive Player of the Year? No, he wasn't. Offensive rookie, Trent LeBounty. I don't think we'll have anybody here. Defensive rookie, Nathan Jackson. Let's go. Let's go. That might get him up to star development, which would be phenomenal for him as we go forward. And this could end up being and, and saving that draft, which is completely abysmal. Could be saving that draft. Good stuff there. I like to see that. Best wide receiver, Jalen Waddle. All right, good. Good stuff there. We're not going to go through the others. Let's go ahead and come back out. And what else do we need to do before we hop into these playoffs? I don't think we need to do anything. We've taken a look at the bracket, taken a look at the stats, looked at the awards. We got a division matchup against the 8-8 eight eight Green Bay Packers. This is wild card. This ain't division. This is wild card. Come on. Let's get past the Packers. We're at home. I believe in you guys. Raheem Morris has coached you up. We're 9-2 over the last 11 games. Let's make this one count. Come on. 41-38. Defense didn't show up, but it didn't matter. We scored 41 points. Man, if we can score 41 points, we should coast. Coast. I mean coast to the Super Bowl. Let's take a look at the bracket, see how things shook out. Looks like the Cardinals were able to handle the Cowboys. So the four-seed Cardinals facing the three-seed Falcons, and as I thought, the Bucks they're better they're better than an 8-8 eight eight team. They're moving on to face the Vikings. If we're able to get past this division round, which we haven't, we've made the playoffs. I believe this is four, not the fourth time we made the playoffs. It's at least the third. Could be the fourth. We haven't gotten past the divisional round. So this is our bugaboo. <laughs> Probably hadn't heard that word in forever. Chiefs, Bengals, Patriots, they all moved on. In the AFC, let's go ahead and upgrade these players. Get the best players out on the field that we can. Get them with the highest overalls that we can get them to. Bobby Beckham is up to an 84, 85, 85 overall defensive tackle. The replacement for Grady Jarrett is looking pretty solid. Brian Smith is going to be up to an 82 overall, you hope. And he is. That's good stuff from your third wide receiver. You definitely like to see that. Still a young guy. Still going to develop. David Woodard. Our other defensive tackle, he's going to get an upgrade as well, up to a 78 overall, so that's good stuff there. Who else do we have to upgrade? Show me some more good impact players. Roman Abbott. Spoiler alert, Roman Abbott, depending on what we do at linebacker, he may see a significant, a significant increase in his snaps next season. I want to upgrade his pass coverage traits. And he's up to a 75 overall, so that's good stuff with the zone coverage there. And then Jalen Waddle, who is already at a 97 overall. He's up two with morale at 99. He's at 97 overall. He's up two. This dude is absolutely phenomenal. He can't go up anymore. He does go up to a 98 because you can see he only has plus one morale now. But look at all the stats that he has upgraded. He's only 27, so a couple more years he's going to be regressing, but... I would say this. there's an X factor for Jalen Waddle coming in the offseason. All right, so we upgraded all the players. We're at home again, the 9-7 and seven Cardinals. Let's get past this division. Let's get past. Let's put this in our rearview mirror, and let's focus on that conference championship, man. Let's go. Raheem Morris, he's the man for the job. We got the right players out on the field. Let's get it done. Uh. <laughs> oh, brother, where art thou? 
I can't believe it. I mean, I can't believe it because it happens every time we make the playoffs. We lose to the Cardinals. We, the offense didn't decide to play. They didn't decide to play. Defensively, it looks like we played pretty solid. Offensively, didn't decide to show up to the field. It is absolutely unfortunate. You hate to see it. But it's another year going back to the drawing board. But a year that we built off of last year. <sighs> I mean, is it disappointing? Yeah. Are there a lot of positives that we can take from this season? Yeah. I mean, we started off 1-4 and four and we ended up 10-6. and six. Good stuff nonetheless. I'll catch you guys at the start of the offseason. Okay, as you can see in the top left-hand corner of the screen, the Cardinals who beat us, they ended up winning the Super Bowl. I believe at least we can take solace in the fact that every time we made the playoffs, the person, the, not the person, the team that beat us has gone on to at least make it to the Super Bowl, and in this case, the Cardinals actually won the Super Bowl. So, whatever, right? Let's take a look at the retirements. Tyler Boyd, Matthew Iadonis. Or Ionitis, rather. Ali Marpet, Alex Armile. Let's take a look at the NFC South. We shouldn't have anybody retiring. However, there are a lot of guys that did retire. Jake Matthews, who was on the Saints, retired. Alvin Kamara retiring. And Michael Thomas. Wow. How about that? We're both the same season. Connor McGovern and Taylor Moton. All right. So we got a few guys to re-sign. Not as many in the past. However, we still have some impact players that we need to re-sign. So my decision here is we are re-signing one, not both, but we are re-signing one, either Osai or Keelan Dent. And it's most likely going to be Joseph Osai. He is one year younger. He is three overalls better. And he has superstar X Factor. So... Hopefully, uh, let's give him, uh, I like the three-year deal. Let's up the salary. Let's up the bonus. 55 years over three years. You like to see that. I'm sure he's going to be happy with that. That's exactly the offer. Good. I wanted to get him signed up. We're going to have to say goodbye to Keelan Dent. A solid, solid seasons. Uh, a solid, a solid few seasons with us throughout his career you're gonna I mean this was a uh, one of our first draft picks I mean he, he came to us in the 2022 season and just look at the seasons he had nine and a half sacks 14 and a half nine 13 and a half he dipped a bit the last couple of seasons so we may be moving on from him at the right time given his age also uh, but nonetheless I, I hate to see him go but it's a move that we do have to make Deion Jones, we are going to move on from him. We do have some linebackers that need to get out on the field. Roman Abbott, I mentioned already, he is going to take a significant upgrade next season because Deion Jones is 33 years old. He is down to an 85 overall. I don't want to bring him back. Paris Ford is regressing already. I'm going to bring him back because I am a little nervous about the options that we would have because we already have a lower overall safety starting at the strong safety position. So I am going to bring him back, although I am going to look to improve this position this offseason. Three years, 16 and a half mil. We'll go ahead and offer that. Thanks for the offer, but I'm just not interested in signing. So we'd have to franchise tag him. One year, $11 million. We'll come back to that. We'll see what we do with that. Matthew Bohannon, who's 29 over, 29 years old at 82 overall. He wants nine point, He wants 18 mil. Okay, nine, 9 mil a year at two years. We can do this if he'll accept it. I would be happy with that. All right, and he does accept it, so you like to see that. we got to bring Nick Campbell back. If we're moving on from Deion Jones, we've got to bring Campbell back. And this is not a bad offer at all. He'll be 30 when this contract ends. He's excited to sign a great offer. I'm excited to have him back. Edward Scott we're going to need to bring back as well. And two years. Um, I want to give him a third year. Uh, yeah, I want to give him a third year. I, I'd actually want to even give him a fourth year, to be honest with you. Because uh, it definitely helps out with a little bit of cap room that we have here. And see if he accepts that. Y you hope that he would. I appreciate the offer. He's going to test out free agency. That's not good. We, we, uh, we got to get one of these guys. We, we got Bohan. And we, I don't really want him to, to walk, to be honest with you. What's the franchise? Same thing. David Woodard I'd like to bring back as well. Our second defensive tackle. That's a decently fair offer, I would say. Happy to sign. Okay, you like to see that. Uh, definitely have to bring Roman Abbott back. We're gonna. I want to actually. He's he's 27. I want to get him for three years. 
I hope he's going to to want to accept this contract. He's good. He's happy. He's going to be our starter. He's going to be our starting right outside linebacker. I'm going to move Landon Little into the middle linebacker spot. Uh, Raheem Baber is 26 at our, as our backup right end. We're going to need to bring him back now just for the simple fact that we are moving on. Uh, he's going to test out free agency. Raheem, come on, man. You're about to get a bigger, bigger role. We just moved on from one of our big pass rushers, even though we've got Corey Baker lined up to take that take that spot but hey James Tuck don't worry he's gonna sign he's gonna come in and take the role that you were going to it's a good offer I'm glad we got the deal done me too man me too Tyrell Page uh probably not I mean he's our backup left tackle we did lock up Matthew Bohannon and I don't want to pay that for a backup left tackle. Marshall Thompson, he was just there for, for backup purposes this past year. He's 28. I don't want to pay that for a backup outside linebacker. I would like to get this Addison Peppers signed again. I don't know why because, you know what, I'm not going to sign him. He's a star, but he's 27 years old. Probably not going to. Glenn Beasley is 28. Probably not going to re-sign him. Antoine Steele has been with us for a while. I'm going to re-sign him because it's such a... It's such a good deal for the team, and he's going to come back, so you like to see that for depth purposes. Demarcus Falk, we will not re-sign him because that's too much for a backup tight end. Andy Paulson, uh, we'll bring him back. Here's that white screen for no reason at all. We'll bring him back. He's happy to continue to play for a great organization, a great organization that cannot make it past the divisional round of the playoffs. That's neither here nor there, though. Why, three years? I mean, yeah, sure. For a fullback, why not? He's going to re-sign as well. Doesn't do it too much for the cap. Uh, J.D. Love, our backup quarterback, will bring him back again. That's a decent offer for a backup quarterback on one-year deal. Don't even really need a backup quarterback because injuries are turned off. And we'll bring Landon Archer back as well because he only wants 750 k All right, so the last person we need to franchise tag... We need to either franchise tag Edward Scott or Paris Ford. Who is the more priority? I, I think Paris Ford is going to be the priority here. I wish I could see. So I think this might leave us with about six to eight mil, which is a bit of a bummer. I can't let Paris Ford go. I, I really can't. I just, I don't, for the one year, this actually might not be a bad, a bad deal because I need to replace him. And he's 29. He's regressing. It's only a one-year deal. I don't like the salary, but I am going to do it. And that leaves us with nothing. That leaves us with not much at all. Like maybe, what, six mil? If that, ah, it's a bit of a bummer. But we did what we needed to do. All right, let's go ahead and advance. I'm going to scout some players, and then I'll see you guys I'll see you guys. At, oh, this is start of free agency. What am I talking about scouting players? We're going to sign some free agents. Probably not. Yeah, we've got, got six and a half mil. So we can sign one free agent. All right, we're going to go ahead and advance to the next week. Hopefully he signs now and doesn't just leave us hanging all the way through. And he rejected. Oh, gosh. Is the other center still available? Probably not, knowing, knowing our luck. Skyler Bolin is still available, but the Patriots have offered him a contract. And it looks like they're probably going to best us. And they are. Can I withdraw my offer? Probably not. Oh, brother. Okay, let's advance and watch Skyler Bolin not accept our offer. As predicted and uh, we can't sign anybody else oh brother might not have a center might not have a center going into the year and it, and 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 as evident as as always evident there's no prospects look I mean a number one center prospect is a fifth round town fifth round town. we'll go ahead because he's second round grade so not bad Let's take a look at this guy. Not looking. Nope. Nope. Not gonna continue to scout him. Not gonna. Not gonna scout him. Guards. Uh, I mean, not really. Not really. All right. Well, we're gonna advance to the draft. I'll catch you guys at our first pick. Okay, I think I've got everything sorted out on our draft board. We can definitely draft some good value players in this draft. I don't think it's the best draft overall. However, for what we need, I think we can get some solid players. We're going to go ahead and skip. We don't pick until the 25th pick. 
So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and advance to our user pick here and um, see what we're gonna look to take in the first round. I, last episode, I made the mistake in taking positions of need as opposed to just taking the best overall player. I don't think I'm gonna make that mistake this this go round. Let's go ahead and look at our draft board, see who's available. Josh Wilbon, John Guerrero, Carlos Morant. This guy looks like he's going to be very solid at the linebacker spot. We may actually take him and then Raheem, is it Raheem Baber? Roman Abbott. Roman Abbott, unfortunately, may not end up playing. But um, it looks like the safety in the corner that I was looking at have been drafted already. I don't want to take this right in. It's not really a position of need. However, this guy looks like he is pretty good. He has the third fastest 40 time, the second most reps on the bench press and his top skills are a minus hit power b plus tackle and b plus finesse moves you can't really argue with that this guy's not going to be there when we're picking again i can tell you that right now but nonetheless i want to see what Corey baker's got he would be a solid option to replace osai but we did just lock him up and if Corey baker's the kind of player i think we don't necessarily need a right end I think I'm going to take Carlos Morant here. Let's just have a look over some of the other players here. Yeah, nobody that I really want to spend a first round pick on. I like this Carlos Morant. Once again, let's just look at his, his 40 time was was awesome. 20 yard shuttles, awesome. Not too bad in the bench press. Top skills, A minus pursuit, B plus tackle, B plus hit power. What you would like to see from a middle linebacker, we're going to go ahead and draft him. He does have hidden development, so that's good. We reached, but only by six spots. Awesome. I am full, I'm more than fine with reaching six spots to get a player with hidden development. You like to see that. He is coming out at a 72 overall. Good pick. All right, I feel like I'm back. I feel like I'm back on track. We're going to go ahead and simulate. Skip ahead to the next user pick. We're going to pick 25th pick in the second round. Let's see what we have. Let's see what's available. Hopefully, one of the guys that's high on our board is still going to be there. What do we do here? What do we do here? I just feel like every offensive lineman that I take... You know what? The O-lineman is projected in the fifth round. He could very well be here next time. Let's take Keontae Vick. Let's roll the dice. Let's go ahead and take Keontae Vick. See what happens. Good pick. 30th in true value. Drafted him at 57. Normal development. You hate to see that. At a 72 overall. All right. Well, not the best pick there. But we did hit a home run on our first overall pick, so we like to see that. Picking in the 25th pick in the third round, going to advance to that. If the O-lineman is still there, we'll probably go ahead and take him. Kelvin Poe is still there, so you like to see that. Let's go ahead and take him. It was between both of them in the past. And uh, vert jump, like that's going to help us center out. Hidden development, let's go. Let's go. We got an O-lineman, other than Matthew Bohannon. A homegrown talent, baby, that has hidden development. I guess Chris Lindstrom had it. He doesn't anymore. 55 overall in true value. We took him at 89. He's a 70 overall, and he has hidden development. We got our center. Let's go. Good pick there. We, maybe Vic was gone, and we couldn't have taken him this time. So it worked out, right? It worked out for us. We're going to go ahead and skip ahead. We picked pretty soon. We've got the uh, number one pick in the fourth round. Yeah, we're going to take Devontae Landry here. <laughs> it would be awesome if we get a hidden development player right here, man. Would be phenomenal. We don't. It was a good pick. So this this take tells you a little bit about where we're at in the draft here. This was a good pick at 95. He's a 68 overall with normal development. You hate to see that, but we do pick again this round. We've got the 21st, 21st pick in the fourth round. Let's go ahead and advance. I feel like this has been a solid draft. We've gotten value. We've gotten some good development traits. We pick right around the corner in here as well, so it's good stuff there. Let's go ahead and make our selection here. Who's who's available? Who's left on our draft board? Let's go ahead and take Tevin Phillips here. How did we do? Normal development. Good pick. He's 32nd in true value, so not bad there. He's a 72 overall. Normal development is unfortunate, but not too bad. We do have a pick right around the corner here. We're going to go ahead and advance to that pick. We're going to make that pick. First at the combine, rather, in the three-cone, 20-yard, and bench press. Let's go ahead and draft him. See what we got. Normal development. Unfortunate. Good value. 90th in true value. Took him at 121. 69 overall. Just didn't hit that, that development trait. That's unfortunate, but we did get two other players with good development traits earlier on. So I, I like to see that, man. I'm happy with this draft. It worked out, it worked out to be pretty good so far. And um, we're going to go ahead and advance. If anybody else is still on our draft board, we'll probably take them. But if not, we're just going to trade the picks away. Yeah, we're not going to roll the dice on here. We're just going to trade these picks away, and then I'll see you at the team screen. Where we're going to show you the team going into 
I believe it's going to be the 2028 season. It's going to be episode number nine. I'll catch you guys there. All right, here is the team going into episode number nine, the 2028 season. Starting with the offensive line, looking a little better, right? Jackson Carmen, 84 overall. Trey Smith at the left guard position. Our second, third, second round, third round? I can't remember. He was a pick in this past draft. Kelvin Poe, center, has hidden development. You like to see us hitting on that. Chris Lindstrom getting up in age. Going to possibly move on from him going forward. But he's at 79 overall. And then Matthew Bohannon still at right tackle at 82 overall. Dominic Darby still at tight end, 87 overall. Justin Fields still at the quarterback. Going to start out this season at 94 overall. You like to see that. I want to see him get that X factor. Who has gotten the X factor is Jalen Waddell. He's up to a 98 overall. Incredible stuff. What an amazing season this dude had. He's our number one wide receiver. Sheldon Field still the number two at 87 overall. With normal development, I want to see him at least get star development, but he's getting to that point where it's not really going to matter age-wise. He'd need to get like superstar for him to really make an impact. Brian Smith is the guy we really want to hope takes that next step. And then you've got Shaq Cobb and then Trevor Timmons. Running backs, who cares? Jordan Alexander, Josh Irving, Tremaine Jones. Let's move on. Defensively, so we have some changes here on defense. We're only coming in with an 85. It does say 86 there, but it's an 85 overall defense. Let's just take a look at it here. At the linebacker position, Carlos Morant was our first round draft pick. He, we drafted him as a middle linebacker. However, we're moving him to right outside linebacker to play that pass coverage role. Roman Abbott is not going to start. I want to get Morant as much playing time as possible. Landon Little, remember, we drafted him as a middle linebacker. Now, we moved him to right outside linebacker because we had Deion Jones, and he was an 87 overall right outside linebacker. Well, we kicked him back into middle linebacker, and usually the overalls go down when you kick on middle linebacker. Landon Little's did not. He's still in an 87 overall, and as you can see, the red outline, he's got superstar X-Factor. So let's take a look at his X-Factor and at his abilities. He still has the two abilities. But his X-Factor is reinforcement. The game's top defenders excel in all situations. When they enter the zone, this ability increases their chance of defeating run blocks and disrupting catches via tackles. So, you like to see that. The most important thing is that development, right? Nick Campbell's going to be staying at the left outside linebacker spot for us. Defensive line. We've moved on from Keelan Dent. Corey Baker is going to step into this role. Keelan Dent's production was sliding, so Corey Baker could step in and remember two years ago, dude had seven and a half sacks, so if he can get that, if not more, with combined he and Osai, Osai at 93 overall with Superstar X Factor, you like to see that, and then Bobby Beckham and David Woodard are at the D-tackle position. At the corners, nothing has changed here, Caleb Farley at 96 overall, Asante Samuel Jr. at an 80 overall, and then Braylon Thomas in the slot at 78. Nothing's changed at the safeties, either Paris Ford at an 82 overall regressing. We need to replace him. We definitely do. And unfortunately, the defensive rookie of the year, Nathan Jackson, did not get a development trait upgrade. That was the thing I was looking most forward to. He's only 22, and he's a 75 overall player, so you like to see that. I just hope he can get that development trait upgrade. Special teams, nothing has changed here except Young Wei Koo continues to decline in his overall. He's down to a 67. Hoff Richter's at a 75. Here's the specialist. Not going to touch too much on this. However, I am going to switch for whatever reason. At the beginning of every season, it puts Joseph Osai, who's a right end, at the left end position. And then it puts whoever our left end is, in this case, Corey Baker, at the right end position. I don't know why it does that. I'm going to shift that around. Most likely going to put Waddle in the slot. Nothing else is really going to change, though. So that is the team going into next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like rating. If you have a comment related to the series, if you're enjoying something specifically, or if you just want to say what's up, man, leave that in the comment section down below. I love interacting with each and every one of you down there. And if you'd like to see more content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on to stay updated with all of my uploads. I'm Jay Slay. I'm signing out today. I'll catch you all on my next video.